Here's my game of the day from round five of the Tata Steel Masters. Vichy Anand against Jeffrey Xiong. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us on patreon.com or PayPal. Right, on with the game. So we've got the 50-year-old Vichy against the 19-year-old Jeffrey Xiong. So far on the tournament, Vichy struggling a bit. He's on one and a half out of four going into this game. Jeffrey Xiong having an excellent tournament. Two and a half out of four. Looks very confident. And this is a confident start to the game. Xiong plays one of the most unbalanced openings. The French winner. That is really brave against Vichy, who has a pretty good record against the French. And Vichy, well, he's not uh, playing mild chess either because he's going for the absolute main line. And that's Queen G4. By far the most dangerous continuation for both sides. And it can get really messy. But Vichy knows his openings very, very well. So I'm sure that uh, he was confident as well going into this. So, I mean... For black, one of the main ways of playing is the old main line is to play queen c7, allow white to take here, and well, white center collapses as well. It, it's incredibly sharp, but recently white has been doing pretty well there. Castles is the other move here. White is certainly doing well against that. But Xiong plays a sideline. Um, King F8. Now this is a little bit unusual, but it has had some strong um, exponents in the past. People like Predrag Nikolic, who's a real specialist in, in the winner. So the idea is, well we can see the idea in a second. Vichy plays H4, looking to push and also perhaps bring his rook out here. The, the main way for black to play this is Queen A5 to attack this pawn and then to play the pawn out to b6 and then the bishop comes out to a6 to exchange off the, the bad bishop. That's kind of the positional justification for this line and, and the king just kind of holds things steady on the king side for the time being. But Xiong played it a different way. He played h5 and that is a very rare move and I have to say I'm not I don't quite get it. Basically, it gives away that g5 square. So a bishop might land there. Well, it does in a moment. Or, or a knight as well. The, the plus side is that black manages to find a nice square for the knight. But this is a very challenging idea and provocative way for black to play. And Xiong had obviously prepared this. He knows his openings pretty well too. So b6, the, the classic idea in, in this variation to exchange off the so-called bad bishop with bishop a6. And Vichy plonks the bishop in straight away. Queen c7, so threatening to take here and to come down. Therefore rook h3, which guards against the threat, protects the pawn on c3. Very logical. Uh, very standard for this line, and then the rook can perhaps join the attack on one of these squares sometimes. Now, I was anticipating bishop a6 here, just the normal move. But instead, Xiong exchanges here and plays like this. I mean, I'm surprised because that kind of clears the situation from white's viewpoint. Um, that pawn on c3 is backward but it's protected by that rook and white has this strong pawn chain so basically white has security in the center and that allows him to start an attack on the king side as we'll see so bishop a6 this positional idea so once bishops are exchanged then at least the queen will have a square here but it takes a long time for that knight to come back into play. In the meantime, Vichy can start his attack on the king's side. Here we go. Knight comes here to threaten the pawn. G6 protects, but now it's it's straight ahead. White just wants to crack open the king's side, and actually, for the moment, black has no counterplay on the queen's side. 
So this is a lot of fun for white to play. Now white wants to push on with h5 to open things up. But first of all, rook c1. Um, because after h5, sometimes you might want to exchange, uh, recapture with a rook, and then this uh, is protected by the rook. Incidentally, I'm sure you've noticed this pin here on the C file. So is knight takes pawn possible? Well, not very good because white will play knight takes pawn, check. The bishop protects the rook, so we can now capture here. The queen moves, the queen's attacked, and then it's white's turn on, on the king side, and of course white is completely winning that position. It just shows that well, one false step here and black's king is just dead. <clears throat> Rook g8 played. So that's partly directed against sacrifices actually. You know, already these were looking vulnerable and also perhaps prophylaxis against white playing h5, which Vichy did anyway. See Black's King is in permanent trouble with this bishop on g5. <clears throat> this is this is this is the whole problem with playing this pawn move to h5 that the bishop gets onto the dark squares. You know what did what did Fisher say? Um, the winner is anti-positional and weakens the king side. That's what Fisher said. Well, that's that's happening here. So, time for some counterplay. This knight, for the moment, is protecting some key squares and can't be shifted. So, Xiong brought the queen in. And Vichy's got to be a little bit careful here. Now, Vichy played knight e2, which is, well, so typical of him. A very straightforward way to play, as we'll see. But... In fact, rook f3 would have been stronger. I mean, I'm not sure he would even have considered this move, actually. It just starts to get very, very messy. And I suspect he looked at a couple of variations and thought, mm, that's tricky. I want something, a really clear plan. But let's just have a very quick look at rook f3. The point is that if black plays, well, let's play a kind of normal move, rook c8. Then white actually breaks through like this. And then e6. This is simply winning. This, there is there is too much going on here. Uh, but there is, there are some tricky tactics, namely knight takes pawn, queen check. Now white has a piece up, but with this move, black gets the piece back because if that's taken by the queen, then the queen takes rook. But actually, white is still better here with some. Very tricky tactics. Let's see this. And now knight takes pawn. Uh, so, well, if this is taken, then you know white is, is breaking through. Um, but queen takes rook. The line isn't over yet. Seems like white's uh, attack has come to nothing. But now this is the trick. Of course, to analyse this variation properly during the game, I think it would be very, very difficult. But basically, white ends up in this endgame a pawn up with good winning chances. But listen, I appreciate that that is a very computery variation. Vichy went for something much more straightforward, knight e2. But it did, did give black a chance. Let's have a look. Rook here. So basically, the point of knight e2 is that now everything is defended, so there was no problem with the pin. And now rook f3. And knight g3. So basically, you can see that Vichy is just piling up on the pawn here. So Xiong has to let go of this knight. Can't be defended. 
So I think in practical terms, I think Vichy's decision was fully justified. He didn't waste a huge amount of time going for this, and he is now a pawn up. But in view of White's rather exposed king, a little bit exposed, <laughs> a little bit, little bit drafty around the king, then White has to be very, very careful here. But at the moment, there are sufficient pieces around the king. And here is where Xiong missed a good chance. He could have swiped a pawn back. And this position is just very, very unclear. Um, this bishop should probably move maybe to here or here. Maybe this rook should move somewhere. Um, at some moment it would be good to, to get the f-pawn going, but white has to watch out for the rook coming down. Um, it's, it's a tricky position. You feel that white should be better here, but it is anything but simple. But instead of this, Xiong played knight f8, which is kind of positionally quite desirable. It feels like a nice move to play the knight to e6, but actually it gives Vichy a chance to consolidate. Queen e2. Now, this looks like kind of full-scale retreat. You know, what's, what's he up to? In fact, you know, this endgame is very promising for white if black exchanges. White is doing very well here, so he's a pawn up. And we can get things going with c4, or if black defends against that, another way forward on the queen side is to play a4 and a5 to break those pawns up and enter the uh, get the rook into the game because that d5 pawn is weak actually so this is certainly very pleasant for white but instead Xiong well he he went for it he played queen a2 now it's got to be careful if queen takes pawn then queen b5 check check and wins the d pawn so that's why queen b1 covers here. But now Vichy, absolutely in his element, played c4. Well, it's a brave move. You know, it's not obvious that this is a very strong move. It is a strong move, but it also rather exposes his own king. But Vichy's judgment was absolutely spot on. So I should say in the game that rook g4 was played, but what about pawn takes pawn? Well, in fact, black's king, attacked from the other side of the board, is in massive trouble. So here you can see that there's no hit against white's king, but this rook is coming down. And after this, well, in fact, the king can't run away, but it doesn't get there in time. This is winning. And mate next move. Or if knight c7 trying to sort of maintain a blockade, again, it just isn't working. That queen gets in, attacking the knight and threatening to come down here as well. So after c4, rook g4 was played, but this leads to a simplification. And again, Vichy had it under control. Let's take a look at this. Here... And this end game, after those exchanges, is actually a very simple win for white. Those center pawns, those connected center pawns, backed up by the F pawn, are just too much for black. And it really doesn't matter that that A pawn is dropping. These last 10 moves or so, Vichy played pretty much instantly. Um, it wasn't, wasn't to do with time pressure. This is just technique, simple technique for the maestro. Um, really easy. He knows, just got to trap that king and push those pawns. So here, Xiong resigned. Well, 
let, let me just demonstrate what could happen. Um, you don't even need to take that pawn. Check. And then f6, and then d7, and rook e8, and mate. Great victory for Vichy. He bounces back. He's on 50%. Ali Reza Firuzja. He won. So he is back in the lead as well. Tournament is really hotting up. And so far, Carson, five draws. Incredible. Thanks for watching.